what's happening everybody this is captain rl with uh, gps fishing maps and bottom fish 24 7. i want to talk to you guys today about fishing in the florida keys specifically the patch reefs from you know hawks channel it's a great place to fish all along hawks channel which is the intercoastal runs north and south um up and down the keys and uh th that's a great place to fish that's sort of inshore on the ocean side which, which this will all be about the ocean side which is where the patch reefs are so people put themselves through quite a bit of agony fishing those patch reefs and trying to catch a few yellowtails or mangroves muttons um there's a lot of red grouper in the keys on that patch there's um there's also some other types of grouper um, there's a couple types of snapper we're after mangroves mainly though okay so mangroves Yellowtails, of course, yellowtail snapper, the most popular fish by far in the Keys. People love to catch, especially flag yellowtail, which is, you know, larger, the larger, uh, big fat yellowtail snapper. Mutton snapper, you can catch in the Keys, of course. Um, zero mackerel on the surface, Spanish mackerel, bonita, and even black fins. And sometimes even dolphin come close in on the patch, but usually not, but sometimes they do. So there's a variety of fish we can catch uh, in the Keys on the on the patch reef without going out just, you know, more than four or five miles at the most, two or three usually. This video is for is for people who who are having trouble or have not having trouble catching fish when they go to the Keys, can't figure things out. People that are fishing it a lot and, and, and not figuring out either way, um, not figuring out exactly what they need to do to, to consistently catch fish. So we're going to break it down into a couple chapters here as far as what to do, maybe even a couple of videos. So this video, we're going to talk about where to set up and how to get your chum going. Because in the Keys, most of the time, without chum, you're, you're not doing nothing. It's not always the case. Mutton fishing can be done in, in, in 90 to 120 feet right off the edge of the, of the patch. But we're not going to go into that on this video. We're going to specifically talk today about fishing on the patch reefs in 10 to 15 feet out to the edge of, edge of the reef where it drops off into 90 feet or so. I'm going to go ahead and recommend uh, that you purchase spots from flfishingspots.com. That's They're going to have spots already designated that they know with a little chum and, and some time on that spot that you will catch fish. they got tons of patch marks from really good fishermen that have fished most of their life in the Keys and some guides that fish there and have fished there and still do fish there. A lot of good spots in the Keys for patch reef fishing and beyond on flfishingspots.com, even deep drop. We're not going to get into that today. I just wanted to drop the plug for flfishingspots.com if you guys are looking for some good spots to start at and be productive. So here we go. Let's check it out, and I'll show you a couple of rigs and a couple of things that we do that, that definitely will make your day better. Okay, so let's talk about chumming while you're fishing in the Florida Keys. The number one thing before the chum's even out, okay, we'll talk about what types of chum and everything in just a second. You got to have current. You can catch fish when the current dies, but you'll have had to have them already biting. And uh, so they won't leave your, your your area where you're fishing. So the current is the main thing. Whether it's going in or out is debatable, whether that matters. I prefer the last three to four hours of outgoing tide. But the fish do bite on incoming too. But it needs to be moving, whatever decision you make on that. So try not to get out there a slack tide because you're going to waste a lot of time and a lot of your chum for, for nothing. Let's just say we got the perfect scenario in this video that it's the last three, four hours about going and you show up. Now it doesn't have to be in the morning. It can be in the afternoon. It can be at night. Matter of fact, patch reef fishing at night is great. So time of day uh, on the patch reef in the Florida Keys, it really doesn't matter. We're looking at the tides. Okay. So let's say you leave and it's 10 in the morning and uh, it's going to be low. Let's say it's going to be low around 2.30, something like that. Perfect. You get set up. All right. So let's talk chum. All right. You'll need to bring, if you don't have fish boxes in your boat where you can stack up some, you know, with some ice in it. If you don't have that, bring a small cooler where you can bring at least six, seven boxes of, of chum. 
and I know that's 50 bucks or so, uh, but you, you really need it or, or you've wasted all your gas and your time and your, the money you spent on lunch and just everything that goes into, as you guys know, it's expensive, especially if you have a twin engine boat to go do it. But twin engine boat or not, it costs a lot of money to, to go out and chum fish. But when you do and you do it right, the results can be incredible. So you want to put out, so let's so you've got your six or seven boxes of chum. Put them, put a little bit of ice on that, and on your way out, go ahead and throw two of those blocks into a bucket where they can start thawing out. Um, an hour ahead of time, two hours is 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 good because we don't want it completely frozen when you put it out. You can do that, um, but we, we would rather have it thawed a little bit so it starts working a little quicker. The pieces start falling out of the out of the cage a little quicker. And in our situation, we're going to use a chum cage. Uh, and a chum cage is the answer to getting that chum block down to certain depths by weighting the cage on the inside. And that'll let you get the, get the chum down to a depth that's acceptable according to how hard the current's running behind your boat once you're anchored and set up or your trolling motor's GPS locked and you're set up and there's current running behind the boat. So we definitely want to make that um, want to make that happen where our chum is not just free floating on the surface because chum blocks float. And if you do that and you got a little bit of current running, especially near a moon and, and such, or the top of the tide when it turns to go out, middle of the tide going out, that chum is going to go back to the middle of nowhere. Now it will bring bait in, but the fish you want are normally on the normally on the bottom. The fish I want are those those magical groupers and and uh, the big mangroves and muttons and things of that nature, they're going to be on the bottom. They don't live near the surface. So by the time that chum sinks, if you've got it just floating behind the boat and it's, and it, and it's leaking out and it's, it's doing its thing, it can be so far back, you'll see the slick behind your boat. It'll be so far back, it'll be almost out of sight. So at what point is it getting to the bottom? Hardly any of it probably makes it to the bottom if you're just free-floating a chum bag. And that's where the chum cages again come in. You weight them on the inside with a couple of 16 ounce weights, zip tie them on the inside of your chum cage. Zip tie those weights in there. Slide your chum bag in there, shut the door, bungee it, and you know, have a crab trap, crab trap string or, or even you know, eighth inch parachute cord, whatever works well for, for this. So uh, you only want you only need, you know, 50, 60 feet on there. You keep it wrapped around the cage, that's how you store it. And, uh, and you're ready to go. So you can drop that, those those chum cages to the depths you want. Here's the key, though. Uh, what we want to do for the first one is we want to get it get it, get your weights in it, zip tie them up, slip it, slip the block in the cage, the chum block, and we're going to drop it at the bow. This is once you're once you're anchored or GPS locked with your trolling motor, you're still you're in the spot you want to be on. So say you're in 30 feet. Okay, we'll just use that for the example as a round number. Drop that chum cage off the bow to about 25 feet approximately. So hit the bottom and come up five feet because you don't want it snagging as the boat moves around in the waves and, and, and whatnot. You don't want that chum cage to get hung on anything. So bring it up five feet. So all the way to the bottom, you know, one, two, three. That's going to be about five feet. So then wrap it around the bow cleat or whatever you have up front, you know, bow rail, whatever it is, because it's just, it's just holding that chum cage up front. Why are we doing it at the bow? That's what you're going to want to know. Why we're doing it at the bow is, by the time that chum comes out of that cage and starts being effective, where we're fishing in the stern of the boat, most people fish off the back deck. If you're fishing off the back deck, we need chum back there where we're dropping our baits to the bottom. Okay? That's not going to help you a whole, whole lot on bait, which is why we're going to drop one to about five feet about midship. But we're trying to keep these chum these chum cages, especially if we're just starting this, we're keeping these chum cages, trying to keep them out of the way of where you're fishing so a fish doesn't get involved with that. And you still have to pay attention because you've got, you know, small rope going to these cages and they're, and they're at depths. So your fish can get involved with that. So if you start catching bigger fish and they're running around, everybody on the boat needs to be in tune to where those cages are so they can get them up right quick if they need to and then get them right back deployed so we don't lose you know lose our chain of chum that we've been working with and creating that that ecosystem 
right at our motors back there. We don't want that to go away very long because the fish will leave. Okay. The next chapter is here. You got your chum set up, let's say. And the, oh, 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 and it doesn't matter on your chum. Uh, sardine chum is fine. Menhaden chum. Whatever you can get is fine. The chum type doesn't matter. If you really want to get into detailed chumming, I'll put out another video or you can contact me personally. I'll tell you about mixing oatmeal and sand in Manhattan oil to make sand bombs for dropping straight to the bottom. But if you, you really don't need to do that, if you do the chumming this way with chum cages, one off the bow, almost on the bottom, and then one again about midship, tied off to something, your, your, your midship cleat on the beam, and uh, at about five to ten feet down. That's going to draw all your ballyhoo and all your bait in. And uh, therefore, connecting the chain of chum, because that chum's going to sink, because it's already it's already underwater, you know, five to ten feet, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go down. As Whereas if you have those floating blocks, man, it just stays on the top and floats back. And it probably never gets to the bottom, especially if there's current, like I said. So, the chum, out of the way. So let's talk about bait for a second. And what we'll be using mainly here, if we go out there with no bait, that's probably not a good idea. So let me tell you something. These big black yellowtail, and really all size yellowtail, they love a live, live small live brown shrimp. So you want to stop by the tackle store or a marina that you may be getting fuel out on the way out, whatever it is. And those small three gallon, four gallon keep alive uh, shrimp buckets or minnow buckets, but an aerator, the kind that have the batteries in the aerator, whichever, that's what you want. You want a small bucket. And when you go get those shrimp, get you about four or five dozen at least. And you want to use the water if the guy lets you at the base store. Use the water he's got the shrimp in because we know they're living in that and living well in that, especially if they're in good condition. They usually will let you have a couple gallons out of there and put in your bucket. That's what you want. Aerate them, put them in the boat, you're good to go. Keep your shrimp in that. And we're going to feed that. We're not going to immediately fish with those. We're going to get we're going to get everything happening first. So that's one bait you need to carry with you. The second, the only second thing, this is really cheap to get to. This should be less than your shrimp. Get a couple of bags. They're usually balled up bags round like this of silver sides, which are glass minnows basically. And they're frozen. And they'll have them for you know, four or five bucks for a big bag of them. Get some of those. And put those on ice, and you keep those on ice because they rot quick. So you'll keep your silver sides on ice. Okay, you've got your chum, and you've got some live shrimp. Time to go. And one other piece of equipment that you'll really like, want to have, aside from a cast net, to get some some extra bait. We're talking about ballyhoo and pilchards here, but a bally hoop or a hoop style net from any any brand works. And um, you literally lift it up through the ballyhoo when they come to your chum blocks, and you just pick them up and dump them into your live well. So that's going to be our, our live fish baits, so to speak, that, that are actually fish um, for our baits. They're actually scale fish. Um, you can also put out a pinfish trap. If you want to bring some pinfish with you, put out a pinfish trap on the, on the bay side and a couple of cans of uh, cat food, poke some holes in it, throw it in the trap, put it out, put a small buoy on it. You know, you'll have tons of pinfish, all two to three inches long, which is fine. So you can bring as much bait like that as you want if you feel like doing the preparation for it. Uh, but you definitely need the live shrimp. Uh, the silver sides, I would highly recommend. And again, if you got somewhere to store the pinfish, maybe in a separate bucket with an aerator, because they'll live in that. I don't really want to mix up my pinfish with the ballyhoo I'm going to catch, though. So, anyways, with all that being said, catch your ballyhoo. You got your pin fish, you got your shrimp. Now, how do we fish it? What type of rigs? And what do we do? All right, so now let's discuss some of the tackle. Now that you've got the basics down of what bait you need to take with you, um, possibly bring along such as pin fish, the shrimp, need those if you're going to fish for yellowtails. If you're not fishing for yellowtails, you just only want a bottom fish. You don't, you don't really need the shrimp. And you can get them, but you really don't need them because we're going to use ballyhoo in that case. We're going to cut up the ballyhoo, and we're going to fish them live with the bill snipped off. 
let's talk about some of the rigs. So the heaviest thing that I'll fish, now the, you don't have to fish this exact brand. Now this is, this is of course, this is an Abbott. This is an Abbott 5.8 MXL loaded up with 50 J braid. So you, you don't need anything this heavy. And this is on a 3050 rod. And it's got, there's an, there's an FG knot that goes to about 12 foot of, of um, mono 50 pound leader. You don't have to do, all, you don't have to get anything this big, okay? The reason I got this one out is to show you the rig that I already have tied on it. So at the end of that 15 foot of leader, what we have is the rig that I discussed in an earlier video. This is just a seven alt VMC octopus hook. And I've put a squid hoochie on it, which you can buy, you know, a 12 pack or 20 pack of these for several dollars on Amazon or wherever. This is a five inch color. Don't matter. Get the black, get the blue, get the green, get the, the white, whatever color you want. But you'll want to fish this. Um, this is a this is good. You, you fish a lot of ballyhoo under this and drop it down to the bottom, reel of about two reels. Devastating. Once your chum's going, and that's another thing too. While we're discussing that, is on on your chum. Let you want your chum to get going. It's it's not going to be effective. For the bottom fish, normally for at least 45 minutes or even more. What we don't want to do is get in the habit of moving a lot. We don't want to move. We don't, we won't, we don't want to move. Once we put time in on that spot, after 30 minutes, a lot of people are always, we're not catching up. Let's go. We've been chumming. That's not good enough. So you want to at least fish out those, those two chum blocks, you want to at least fish those out completely where they're not putting out anything anymore. They're about done. And if you're doing good, you need to be on top of that and change them out. More than likely, you won't have to move because you're going to bring the fish to you as that ecosystem goes to work right behind your propellers on your motors. Okay. The other thing that you'll want. Now I've got a, I've got a, I've got a dial with saltist, 1,000, 4,000 dial with saltist with 30 pound spider wire on it. And this is just a Carolina rig, okay? A lot of people like to use knocker rigs. That's fine, too. And it's paired to my favorite, which is just a 7 aught BMC octopus hook. This is the same hook that I just showed you with the squid hoochie on it. You want to snail that hook on, and uh, you want about 6 or 8 feet a liter going to a 1-ounce weight. 1 ounce is usually plenty. Sometimes a half ounce is enough. You want to use just enough where it can get to the bottom without too much scope. You know, you want it to be pretty much straight down, but it can be out a little bit if you want to use less weight. You know, your, your line can be out a little bit, but you don't want it going back like this. It's not enough weight. And then you want to reel it up a couple of reels off the bottom just so something doesn't rock you up, you know, immediately. They don't get you into the coral as soon as they hit. So you just want a couple feet off the bottom. The next thing that I, that I like to see people use because it works so well and again, the reels really don't matter too much here. You just need something that'll work. This is just a bug tail, obviously. And this one is, uh, it's white. Color really doesn't matter. The green, chartreuse, whatever, all of them work. This is a two ounce because we fish heavier current where I have this rig for at the moment. So a one ounce bug tail will be plenty. Make sure it's got a good hook on it. But fish a bug tail works incredible. Grouper absolutely love doing it. They love it. So this is a very, the butt tail is very, very effective. And like you see in the clip here, we're just annihilating the snapper um, using bug tails, hoochies, and bear hook with ballyhoo on them. And uh, that's, what, that's what you want to use. That's nothing special because we didn't do that. The chum did that. What you have to have is the patience and knowing you're on some good coral bottom where it meets grass or sand, but you need some structure around for those types of fish to come and play. And um, the depth matters a little bit, but not a whole bunch. Now, for group or snapper, it, it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, they're going to come 15 feet, 20 feet, whatever. Just make sure you're on some good looking bottom. Make sure you're marking some coral. You can look over the side in the keys and normally see that, okay, this is all sand. Don't do that. Don't anchor there. You want to be on top of some good coral, um, just some good, you know, good bottom with a lot of relief to it. 
And uh, the yellowtails, the bigger yellowtails are normally out at 70 to 90 feet, right on the edge of the patch where it drops off into blue water there. And you, and you lose sight of the bottom visually. It's about where it is. Um, if you want to catch big yellowtails. For everything else, don't matter so much. You can make them come. The chum, and they will come, guys. They will. We never let the chum run out. I'm going to pick a spot and I'm going to give it an hour and a half, hour and 15, hour and a half. If nothing has happened, of course I'm going to move. But if I chum, they'll come. So you just keep those two chum blocks going. And uh, every now and then check your shallow one. If it's starting to get puny and get small, you need to put a new block in. You know, you can stick it in there with the rest of the remaining of the, the bag that's about out. Stick another chum block in there, redeploy it. Um, the one on the bottom, it'll probably go, it'll probably go dry on you, so to speak. It'll run out of chum a lot quicker than the one that's just a few feet down. It's just the way that it happens for whatever reason. So keep an eye on your chum, but you don't want to bring it up for long. When you bring it up, have another block ready, you know, that you can get to pretty quick in case it's low. You want to get another chum block out right away. If you don't, this will cease. And uh, it, it doesn't take long. If you, if you take, say, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, the whole ecosystem you've created behind your boat, is it, the chain's broken. And if you ever, if you ever break the chain, it, you got to start all over again. Uh, the fish will hang around a while wondering what's going on. But once they lose the scent and the track of food, they're going to move on along and be on their way. And once you put an hour and a half or more into a spot, stick and stay, make them pay. And just some key notes to remember. Um, you need a valley hoop net, your shrimp, your silver sides, frozen. Um, get some pinfish if you want, real good for muttons and, and, and groupers. Uh, and, and big black back mangroves. Uh, we call them black snapper when they get above two or three pounds. Um, near, near a full moon, especially at nighttime, when it's nightfall, uh, mangrove fishing can be incredible in, in 20 to 30 feet around coral areas. And uh, a lot of chums required, just like I said. Uh, big mangroves often are right before, especially in the spring and summer months, right before a full moon uh, or right on the day of the full moon that night. At, at sunset, the mangrove fishing can be really, really good, as can the, the different types of grouper fishing for those. There's many different types of grouper. That, a lot of fish like that full moon, especially right at dusk or right before daylight. Uh, but the evening time seems to be even better. But listen, again, I'm not trying to contradict what I said earlier, because you can fish any time of day uh, on the patch reefs and, and, and fish this method of double chum blocks. Keep them going. And you shouldn't have any problem. Just don't move too much. Just remember that, guys. If nothing's happening after an hour and 15 or so, hour and a half, you've given the chain of chum time to work. If it just isn't working and you don't get anything up to your boat, no bait or anything's coming, like something's wrong. There's either a big shark in there or, or something's just off. But normally it doesn't matter as long as you're on coral and you're in 15 to 25 feet, it's not really going to matter um, what you do. The, the fish are going to come. So remember, stick and stay, make them pay. Chum and they will come. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments or feel free to send an email to the email listed here in the description. And um, you guys have a good day. Good luck fishing in the Keys. I hope some of this helped you. Yeah, sorry I'm not on the boat to just show you how it works, but. So hopefully I've explained it well enough for you guys who are just starting to fish down there or struggling a little bit maybe to catch good fish. The main thing is the chum. It really is in fresh bait. All right. So we'll see you guys next time. It's Captain RL signing out for Modern Fish 24-7. I'll take care. We'll see you. Be safe on the water.